Hey guys, Mark Farash with ProTech Dog Training. It's been a few weeks before I got back to you guys after I just got done with one of the dogs I was working, Rebel, with a reactivity problem that we had. And he went home yesterday and it got my mind thinking about a few things. So I figured I'd have one of my little yak sessions at the screen. All right. Um, one of the biggest things that when you do an in-kennel or in-home or what they call a boot camp type of a training program, you're giving the dog to somebody else to train and they have them in their facility and they may work the dog two, three times a day, depending like I do, depending on the trainer. <clears throat> and they're, they're conditioning the animal to do basic obedience as an example to start, heel, sit, down, stay, come and a finish. And with me, I approach that with obedience as the key to 90% of problem behavior. So I do my obedience program and then I center on what the customer needs as far as problem behavior. With Rebel, it was reactivity. And he was um, showing a lot of boundary protection, barrier type protection, which is a very natural thing for the dog. But even more so when they would go out and try to take the dog for a walk down the street, the dog would hear another the dog barking up the street and the dog's on a fence line and their dog goes walking by and boom the dog would go crazy and be reactive on that fence line with his owner. The owners a lot of times don't know how to deal with us so uh, they came to me to try to solve this problem. So I use obedience and then I start doing what I call floating the bubble and making the dog more responsible and, and uh, cognizant of the, his responsibilities in doing the obedience and pay attention to me versus that other distraction. And we use distance is our friend and we do what we call floating the bubble, we keep our thresholds very low and then we do a lot of right about turns, left hand turns and we do our conditioning in such a way that the dog starts to get a positive behavior set from doing the right thing and having the right answer. Okay, so this is the way we handle Rebel. There's a lot of different dogs, a lot of different reasons that they manifest this type of behavior. So we got to figure out and get in the dog's head first, and then we go from there. But what I wanted to talk to you guys about today more so than, than that was that he just went home yesterday, and like I said, it got me thinking about some things. And the biggest thing that I could tell his owners and to tell you folks is that when you do one of these in-kennel training programs, make sure that you understand the dog is not a robot. Just because he comes home trained and his behavior's changed somewhat, he's going to start slipping and sliding right back to that whole behavior set. The reason being is the dog respects every person in that pack as an individual and you have a certain relationship with that dog so you have to grow your relationship with that dog in such a way that you become the pack leader and then he understands he has to do the same thing and the most important thing I can tell you is do not let this dog slip back to that same behavior patterns. If you do you basically just pissed your money away. A lot of customers do this. They come to a dog trainer and a lot of clients and they'll come to a dog trainer and they'll get right back to their old life because they're too busy, you know? And they, they do the training to alleviate some of the problems that they have with a dog and then they let the dog slide right back into the same old behavior patterns and pretty soon they've just pissed their money away. Okay, so take the time, take the effort to make sure you work with that training trainer that you're working with and take your lessons on the backside and learn how to do your, your corrections, learn how to do your turns, right turn, left hand turn. There's a whole series of different turns and things that you have to learn. When I work with a customer, I always like to tell them that training is kind of like learning how to play guitar on an instrument, okay? When you first start, you start putting your hands in the frets and you're going to the F and the G and you're changing your hands. You have to think about everything you're doing and it's a struggle and it, it takes time. And with more practice and more diligence on and working towards learning to play this instrument, pretty soon your fingers just fall there and your conscious mind doesn't have to think about it anymore. Your unconscious picks up for it and pretty soon you're sliding right to the frets you need to and now you need to work on getting the notes to sound better better and you need to have pressure on the on the frets in the right way in such a way that now the notes start to really sound and resonate the proper uh, in the proper way to, to, to make music okay and that takes time all right so you need to do the same thing when you start getting the dog back you need to learn to do a whole series of turns to handle the leash properly to make sure that you're correcting with timing properly and there's a lot to learn and at the beginning it's going to be a struggle it's going to be some work to get there and as you keep doing it after a while you don't even think about it pretty soon it just becomes easy just like playing that instrument and now your skills really start to grow so my biggest advice to you when you have this type of a training program and you take advantage of some Somebody that has the experience to be able to condition your animal in the right way and do the right things for your animal, make sure that you put in that work that you need to when you get the dog back and, and plan on having three or four or five lessons and really changing your behavior patterns and how you deal with this animal so he doesn't, you don't allow him to slip right back into the same old beha behavior patterns. That's the biggest thing I try to tell my customers because in, in, in the long run, you're basically just pissing your money away. 
if you don't do it and, and work a little bit hard to get over that little hump. Once you get over the hump, you're not thinking about it anymore. Your unconscious is doing the job, and now life becomes grand because now you have an animal that you can take out with you, go places with you. You've now given your animal more freedom because now he knows what he's supposed to be doing, and now you can enjoy each other's company. Okay, That's what it's all about, to be able to give the dog freedom. That's what training is all about. Uh, it, it is for your state of mind and for your sanity as well, but at the same time, when you do this, you're basically giving the dog a life. You're giving him freedom. You no longer have to have him stuck in the backyard because the dog doesn't mind. Okay, Very important. So keep it in mind. I thank you very much. I've got another dog in now that we're doing that's been in the backyard for five years. This dog is high energy outflow. I know the bloodlines. The dog is something else. And he's been a lot of work. It's been about two weeks since I've had him in. He's now just starting to get all his, his uh, marker words set in. No, yes, and, and good. And he's starting to understand the communication-based word that we're set up in. Now, as I told this customer, they're getting their money's worth because it takes a lot of work to recondition a dog like this. A lot of people come in you and they always ask the question, um, can an old dog learn something new? Yes, he can, but it's a lot more work. It's a lot more work to polish out that scratch in the record to get it back to being nice and smooth and be able to work the animal in the right way. The dog will never be the dog that he would have been if you would have imprinted him as a puppy and did the training right from when they're young because the dog has no other way of thinking and now you've ba basically conditioned his state of mind in the right places and you're, allow you're able to be able to take his state of mind and, and toggle it into these things. When I say, are you ready, ready, the dog gets excited. When I say, no, the dog right away knows no. He has all these things that are imprinted from a young, young dog that he will always know and that will have the dog be a lot better trained. This dog is going to be pretty well trained when I get done with him, but he's still going to have the old dog in him. He's still going to have the old Zach. So we'll find out what happens when that goes along, and I'll be checking in with him pretty soon and giving you some demos with him too. So keep in mind, don't piss your money away. Make sure you put in the hard work that it takes afterwards and take advantage of what you've got available to you when you pay a professional. That's what we're here for. Educate you, teach you, get you to make sure that you do the right things, and we want you to succeed. That's how we, we benefit. If you look good, as I tell my customers, I look good. And that's what's real important to me. So I'm always drilling that into my customers. I want them to do nice, crisp hand signals, command tones, things that, that make them look like they have good control over the dog. And again, if they look good, I look good. That's what it's all about. Mark Farash with ProTech Dog Training. We'll talk to you guys later. Have a good day. Bye-bye.